You are now inside Sonetta Studios, the House of Consciousness production, Black News presentation. Peace and Black Power family. Welcome to another Sonetta TV, House of Continents production. You already know what it is. This is going to be a powerful, powerful interview. We got um, um, we got Dion D. Jenkins in the building. And family, he's going to be running on a reparations platform as a senator of California. Y'all don't want to miss this. I had to bring out the best of the best when it comes to interviews like this, dealing with the politics, dealing with um everything that's going on. And you know who I had to call on. If you've been following me, who do you think I had to call on to conduct this interview? The man, Lord Abbott in the building, y'all. Let's give it up. Peace and black power to my brother, Lord Abba. Islam, what's up, brother? Unmute yourself. I don't hear you now. What's going on, Lord Apple? <laughs> you got your joint muted now. No, I don't hear you. I heard you at first. Now I don't hear you. Let me see if I hear my brother Jenkins. Say something, Jenkins. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I hear you. Jump off and jump back on, Lord Apple. Real quick. Yeah, man, this is going to be a real powerful interview right here. I see my brother making his rounds on Lord Jamal's platform as well. And mm -hmm. um, the brother is a powerful, powerful um, writer. He, um, hip-hop artist, right? Right or wrong, brother? Yep. Yeah, hip-hop artist, man. All right, let's get Lord Abba back in here. Hope everything is good. Nah, brother, I don't hear you. Damn, it was good before you, you know, you did all that. We did all that. Yeah, I hear static, Lord Apple. Do you hear me, Lord Apple? Yeah. You was good when you first came in. No, I don't hear you. Um, ask check. him to ask him to check his laptop. He may be he may be muted on his laptop. In just um, ask him to check that right quick. Yeah, he can hear you. He hear you. He looking at okay, it. Okay. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. Man, uh, you might be muted on your laptop in because that's what. Unmute your unmute yourself too, Lord. You got yourself muted on the screen. <clears throat> one two one two there we go there we go there, there we, we go. go there we go all right man so we're gonna take it from the top and um lord abba man how you doing brother i'm good i'm good uh thank you for having me on you know when you asked me to come on and interview the brother of course you know i had i had to step up and, and, and do my i appreciate you house, being available my house of consciousness dude it's <laughs> part of the my house of consciousness duty, right? Right. Did you do any research on the brother? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm actually right, familiar right. with the brother from uh, when he was trying to do his presidential run a few years ago. Wow. Okay. And yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, I, I try to keep my ears to the to these political streets. Hey, what is it like, Lord Abba, when you see brothers coming up out of the hip hop nation, out of hip hop, and you see them running into office? What is that like to you, brother? 
I mean, I think that it's a beautiful thing because, you know, we've learned a lot of information over the past several decades via avenues of Afrocentrism, Nation of Islam, 5%, it doesn't matter. We can name a bunch of stuff, but it didn't put us closer to the levers of power and it didn't put us in the seats of power. So at the end of the day, our elders died with a lot of information, but they weren't able to move anything for us politically. And so we, as you know, my brothers that be the power and the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen, we came through all of those different schools of thought. I've been on this channel. Everybody knows me, you know what I'm saying, from Sarnetta's, from Sarnetta's channel. And we came to the ultimate realization, and that is politics is the end all be all. If you're not aware, right, then you're, you can't be conscious. You can't be aware if your information doesn't take you to an understanding that you must be in the seat of power in this country in order for things to change. And so, you know, we're just here to do our part. All right. So I'm going to pass you the mic, brother, and um, yeah, go ahead and, and bring uh, on. Yes, go ahead. First, uh, I want to clear a little something up. Um, I'm not a senator yet. I'm, I'm running. The right. That's what I thought I said that. that. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bro. Go ahead, Lord Apple. Let's okay. Get definitely. Definitely. So, you know, I got a couple questions that I have that I, I, I want to ask the brother. Um, and the, the first question is, I said, you are a grassroots hip hop artist who also received cosigns from legendary hip hop icons like the late DJ K Slay, rest in peace to the drama, drama king and brother Lord Jamal. We're going to get the Lord Jamal later for being an extremely talented rapper. How yes, does hip hop and politics parallel? Um, hip hop and politics. Um, give me a second. Um, the commercial rap industry tries its best to influence young black men to avoid politics and gets them prioritizing criminal life. Hip hop started as a medium for young black men to voice their opinions against a corrupt government that, that oppressed them. It was straight from the streets. It was raw. It was truthful about white supremacy. Today, it is corporate it is a corporate, inauthentic, and completely anti-Black music form. It promotes the killing and incarceration of young Black men. A famous line went like this, like, you know, we all know it. So you say that you were gangster, but you never popped nothing, right? And when the artist talks about shooting someone, he is not talking about law, law enforcement, white extremist groups, or anything else. We all know who he is talking about, another Black man. He validated killing black men, and it became the culture of traditional corporate back rap music. Our destruction and genocide has been validated. So now I am the equalizer to that dysfunction, being a hip hop artist who promotes the infiltration of American politics and using this hip hop platform as a way to get reparations for blacks who descended from American slaves. So hip hop is parallel with politics and they try their best to distract us, you know, away from that. And, you know, it right now is being used as a genocidal apparatus to lower our numbers. Indeed. Let me ask you, brother, um, what made you decide to say, you know what, let me get up, let me do something for my people. Let me let me try to run for something. Let me do something because I can't right. talk the talk. I got to be able to show show our people yes. and, and put my best foot forward and show them what I'm doing. So therefore, I could be able to speak to them. What made um, you decide to do right. this, brother? I had this idea ever since I was a child. My mom used to have me watch uh, Eyes on the Prize as a little kid, and I remember seeing eyes on the prize at like nine or 10 years old and uh, almost coming to tears, um, seeing how they did to our great men of valors like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, and all, how, how they were assassinated. Um, and as I got older, I began to do more research of a lot of other black men who are incarcerated until this day, okay? Political prisoners right now, locked up. Um, you know, we don't mind, you know, uh, you know, nobody have a free 
campaign for these young men or, or older men now. So, um, you know, guys like people in the Liberation Army, Black Liberation Army, they're still locked up, right? Black Panther Party, a lot of those guys are still locked up till this day. So um, doing a lot of research, I concluded that something had to be done. Um, I would tell people as a youngster, I would be president one day. And I stopped doing that because I saw that it was so far away and I didn't want to be targeted. I didn't I didn't want to be seen as some super dreamer who's having all of these big goals and dreams ahead of them and not really having people seeing that that was accomplishable and eventually, like I said, becoming a target. So I kept it quiet until I turned 35. I knew when I turned 35 years old, I was going to register and try to uh, become become president. And that's what I did. I filed with the FEC and I became uh, it's on record that I was actually the youngest presidential candidate to ever run. Because right when I turned right, right when I turned 35, um, I filled it out. Like the very first day I turned term 35 and filled it out. <laughs> and so but it's been a year for many years. Um, I had this goal in mind. I didn't quite know how I was going to construct it until later, though. Matter of fact, even when I filed in 2015, I still didn't have the complete idea, but I knew I wanted reparations. And I was the only candidate bringing that to the forefront in in American politics. Everybody else was rejecting it, saying it couldn't be done. And now we have a reparations movement. Shout out to the new black media, guys like yourself, people like yourself who is, who is uh, you know, allowing um, candidates like myself to have a platform because the mainstream media is not going to allow us to get the word out. So we need people like yourself to help get the word out and inform people that we have candidates out here and people who are making moves and who are fighting for our people, putting themselves on the front line to get power because black empower, black empowerment is the answer against white supremacy because w you cannot have white supremacy and black empowerment at the same time. That's why they try to destroy any efforts of black empowerment. Indeed, indeed. Yes, so there, there are roughly two and a half million blacks in California, making up roughly 6% of the population. In a statewide election, how do you, as a black politician, mm -hmm. or as we say, a freedman politician, an mm -hmm. American freedman to be specific, in the state of California, gain enough of the electorate to turn out so that you right. can be victorious on election day? Well, the very first thing that we have to establish is the number of votes needed to win a race in California, a Senate race in California. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris won with a 7.5 million vote tally. However, her challenger, Loretta Sanchez, only had 4.7 million votes. So she only needed 4.8 million to win. Now, keep that number in mind, okay? 4.8 million. Keep that number in mind. In the last election, you needed 4.8 million votes. Now, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, taken in 2020, there are 2.2 million black people who identify as black. Now, according to the same census, California, who identify as being two or more racist, grew by a whopping 217.3% to about 5.8 million people. So I would say that the majority of those people are black people who identify as mixed because the number one group of people who classify themselves as mixed are black people who have who have lineages mixed in from other groups. We are all technically mixed, but some black people use the mixed classification as an escape from being black. But trust me, if there are any reparations given, these people are going to quickly classify as black. If there are any incentive of reparations, they are going to quickly classify as black. If there is a possibility that a reparations candidate can get in there, they will vote black. So let's say that 4 million out of that 5.8 million are black mixed people, right? Then you can add another 4 million 
to that 2.2 million already documented, which gives you a whopping 6.2 million people. Also, many people classify as Native American. Okay, so you can add another million people, giving you about 7.2 million people. Okay, black people like to classify themselves as Native American also. Don't forget the blacks who deliberately lied on the census, claiming that they were white or Asian or something else, because black people understand that being black is a negative stigma. So there is an incentive to not label yourself as black. Now, here's the real trick in the bag, right? Many black people do not, don't even take the census. So that 7.2 million people that are documented, okay, are only a fraction of the blacks who descended from American slaves in California. Well, well, let me let me jump in well, then. How do you get them to turn out? How do you get that right, percentage right. who are not identifying themselves, right. you know, by filling yeah. out the right. census records to turn out turn out for you? I'm gonna get to that. Give me a okay. second. All right. Okay. So most of us have whole families who never took any census forms or any other form of documentation. Many of us are completely displaced from corporate America and have been our entire lives. So that 7.2 million have just doubled at least. So we have about 15 million black people in California. And you only need a little more than a quarter of those blacks to vote for a candidate. And those black people alone can win an election without a single white vote or any other vote. Now we know that other groups will vote for a candidate like myself. Also, how I know this, because some of those people helped me get on the ballot. The majority of them will, will not. But I can get a fraction of the white vote, a fraction of the Hispanic vote, a fraction of the Asian vote or anything else. Without having to compromise my stance or sell out my black agenda, priority, reparations, platform, candidacy. Now, you ask a good question. How do you mobilize those people? people to come out and vote. Well, that's what we need. First of all, we never had anything outside of word of mouth, right? So what we have to understand is that when people understand that there is an incentive to vote, our people don't find it, don't find an incentive to vote. So we don't vote. A lot of times we are fed the idea that we are a minority and we don't have a chance of winning. And we have we take a defeatist mind state in politics, and that's by design. That's all by design, right? So they feed us narratives like, well, we don't have enough. No, trust me, they know that we have way more numbers. They know it. The government knows knows this, but there's an incentive to make sure that they. Now, let me be clear though; they are the majority, but. They classify other groups as white as well. They classify Hispanics as white. You could be white Hispanic. You could be uh, uh, um, a lot of Asians classified as white. So their numbers are even bigger in documentation than what it really is. Our numbers are smaller in documentation than what it really is. So the equalizer is... Once we understand that we do have more numbers and we let the people know, nah, we can win elections with a black agenda, people won't be so pessimistic about the idea and they'll come out and vote. They're, they will be more enthusiastic to vote because they know that they have a chance. But if they're convinced that they don't have a chance, trust me, they're not doing anything in that Indeed. direction. Yes, Indeed. sir. Indeed. Yes, so, you know, let, let's talk, but well, let's stick to California for a moment, right? Um, yes, the California sir. Task Force for Reparations, you know, mm -hmm. I want to shout out a B family over there. AB3121. Yes, that's sir. right. That's right. Shout out to Sister Camila Moore, who's mm -hmm. the chair of that senator. task yep. force. I think she's yep, running for yep. state senator, right? That's right. That's right. Go and, out um, and support that, that young lady. That's we right. Gotta, that's we, right. We got to get her in there. Yes, sir. That's right. We we support all freedmen candidates. So That's make right. sure y'all support all of the freedmen reparationist mm -hmm. candidates who mm -hmm. are running. Point blank, period. Um, you know, I want to shout out C Jack. I want to shout out the NAASD out mm -hmm. there that also helped with the drafting 
of some of that language of not just AB 3121, but um, HB 1604 as well. So okay. if that bill is passed, it will allow disaggregation between American freedmen and blacks who come from Africa, the Caribbean, yeah. et cetera. What are, and I, and I heard uh, most of your interview with Lord Jamal, mm -hmm. but you know, this is a different audience. What, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on, you know, the reparations task force and the bill that mm -hmm. this, that will disaggregate freedmen, those Great of us question. who had ancestors. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Go Great ahead. question. So the very first thing that we must understand is, is that state legislation, right? And they're doing a fabulous job. Um, I think that they have to tune in, the, uh, tune up the language a little bit more um, to make it really clear. I think they won by a five, four vote to make sure that blacks who descended from American slaves get reparations and not just any black. Right. That's right. So they barely won that by a small margin. However, um, there are some. I don't agree with all of the of the language far as we can't make sure that that the word black is in that bill. What, what do you mean? OK, so. The, um, the word black have to be in that bill because a person who have any type of lineage from slavery can say a white person who have been been passed as white his whole entire life can come in and say, well, look, I have a great great grand mother who was black i'm a uh i'm a descendant of, of of slaves too right um in order to really make sure that it's really specific we have to advocate blacks who descended from american slaves and by doing that you make it clear as day what type of people what lineage gets reparations and and everybody can't just so Take you, uh, so you, because uh, I'm I'm not familiar with them removing the word black. I'm familiar with with some of you know the right. um, conversations. I'll I'll put it like that. So are you saying that there's some uh, contention with the word black being in the right. bill from right. the task force? I'm 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 confused that. Right. Oh yeah, because as far as I know, there's no. I mean, the word black. Is is definitely in in that bill. Uh, I Unless know there was still, some maybe maybe they just put it in there because the last time I checked, it was not in there. I, I mean, far as the the lineage part, far as mm -hmm. blacks who descended from American slaves, making sure that black people who descended from American slaves, because there is a there was a debate about it being illegal to put in the word black because um, the, uh, there have been. Uh, um, uh, um, there have been civil rights laws who that made it sh that specify that you cannot give anything allocated towards a certain group of people. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Right. So but that is not true because the 14th Amendment was established that we so are. You're, I'm, I'm just I'm com you're talking about the AB 3121 yeah. or, the, or HB 1604. I'm talking about AB 312. OK, OK, OK. Oh, so oh, you no. We we yeah we definitely no definitely definitely we definitely understand gotcha. that blackness as it is is a, is an aggregated term which includes everybody and this is why that bill in California HB 1604 which is a bill for disaggregation makes mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying it makes sense it complements AB 3121 it actually helps the process and it, it kind of gives a blueprint of what can be done at the federal level in in some senses so i, I definitely wanted your take on that yeah so the, the next thing that i was going to say is that um mm -hmm. um it's a state bill and that's, that's why right. that's why i'm advocating to get in the federal congress because we need that say that same movement federally so um, there's a huge difference between trying to pass it through the state because that only helps California. But if you could get a federal movement going on in Congress, then everybody is affected, the whole country, right? And states, they only have minimal amount of power. 
You know, we had a civil war because the states did not agree with the federal government. So the government can all can always step in and say, no, this is unconstitutional. You're going to need U.S. senators to write bills to back that stuff up. Right. And my I mean, my dream is that is that every state that AB three, uh, three, one, two, one become the stepping stone and the precedent for every state to, to do that. But even if every state was to start passing reparations legislation, the U.S. government can always step in and say that's that is not constitutional and we're not allowing it to happen. So you need you need the U.S. Congress. You need the House of Representatives and the, and, and the U.S. Um, um, the U.S. Senate to get involved. And if you have those two apparatuses going on at the same time, state and federal, now you have a movement and that's what we need. So shout out to the task force, shout out. And, um, but we need it all. Okay. We're, we we can not right. just start. We can't be cause. Okay. One thing about our people, let's be real. We get too emotional. We get distracted and we and and the reason why we get distracted is because we are very emotional when it comes to politics and stuff like that. Uh, somebody said he needs a few millions to win. Senate. No, you, you don't need millions to win a Senate. No. All you need is support. I don't I'm not even taking any donations. I'm not taking donations. OK, I'm, uh, all we need uh, is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I got you're you're not taking any donations, not, not even small donor any donations donation. from the people. Nope. I want everybody because most of our people don't have money. We need to just create a culture of them voting because once we get them in, because you need money to promote yourself. That's where your, your money goes. It goes to campaign ads. Right. It, it goes to uh, grassroots organizing. It, it goes to or, grassroots structuring, right? Pay, it, paying gotta, the people uh, to knock on doors and hand out flyers. Yeah, commercials. all of that. Right, definitely, right, definitely. Right. definitely. Right. So if we just had a movement of people, if we get the word out enough and say, we need to support these candidates, we need to support reparations, then, and made that a culture, then people would uh, come out and vote. And you know, without a million dollars worth of commercials, because that's where the million dollars comes in. It don't cost millions of dollars to get a street team. Trust me, I know. I have, I, I had one to get on the ballot. It, it didn't cost me millions of dollars. All right, it costed money. I, I, I took money out of my own pocket to do that. So we and that's another reason why we don't take politics seriously is because too many of us think think that we need millions of dollars to win these types of races all we need is the word of mouth and the support of the people and how we get that word is i mean we're doing it right now uh, 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 allow me to get on this platform allow me to spread the word to more people here you know indeed, indeed. And then and then more the new black media have to get involved with this type of movement because that's where it's at. Uh, you know, ABC and NBC and MTV and all these guys and Viacom, we can't depend on them. We're not going to be able to depend on them. We need you guys to put the word out and um, and we need people who are courageous enough to actually put themselves on the front line to get in these uh you know these um you know to, to, uh, to get this power you know to get positions to get these seats to write legislation and get positions of power and that's what we need as a people and do you you uh, i mean i i, I <laughs> i'm a I want to offer some pushback, but I'm not going to. No, 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 no. Push back, push, push back, back, push back. No, 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 no. Because, it, we you know, it, it takes. I want to hear it, it. It, it. You have to have. And I understand what you're saying with having the street team. But 
when you are a politician and you know you could bring up the new black media right if you don't have Roland Martin involved and we know that he's a, a shill for the Democrat and we know that News One is a anti-black man hating uh, black news platform etc but you know we we can build support through new black media that that's a fact but mm -hmm. the money that it takes and I've been studying politics for a long time now and I've, I've had my eyes on this game for a, a very long time. And you you definitely, you definitely need, that's my pushback, is that you need money. Even people are in the chat say, nah, bro, I wanna support you financially, we disagree. You know, it's people trying to give you money in the chat. So, you know, of course I, you know, based on my knowledge and, and the little bit of experience that I have, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I want to offer some pushback on that because that is, you know, it's hard to, and I watched candidates struggle because yeah. they, it, you know, they are, they didn't, they didn't have the money to compete. My brother Ali, shout out to my yeah. brother Ali. He said a lot of new black media are also anti voting. So we have to be careful, you know, with that as well, you know, so you know what 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 is your well, what is your pushback yeah. to my pushback so uh, let me clarify that the new black media is anti voting for the establishment candidates they're not against voting for grassroots organizers like myself who have a reparations platform and i can i got the receipts going back all the way since 2015 so i'm not just just some guy who just popped up um you know sh shout out to the late dj k slay heard my song told me that when he first heard of a rapper running for president, at, he first thought it was he first thought it was corny and gimmicky. He told me that until he heard the rap, he heard yeah, the that, that track was fire. And yeah, I'm, I'm from New York. Right. I'm a harsh, and I got bars myself. I'm right. a harsh critic yeah, of bars, right. but I, I ain't gonna lie, that joint was fire. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That man took me, brought me out there, and said, "Look, man." He said, "Look." I'm going to have you on shade 45. The people need to hear you. So that's 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 what we need because it's not about the reason why it's not about money and the reason why so many of our people fail is because they don't have the name recognition. And it costs a lot of money to get the name recognition because the corporate entities charge millions of dollars for the type of promoting that you need. But this right here, if you add up all spaces all channels of the new black media and you uh calculated and total their reach it would be in the millions of people millions of people the mi millions of people so it's not that we can't win elections if we don't have millions of dollars that's that's not it that's why they're trying to shut the black the new black media down right now joe biden signed uh a task force that's going to actually go after what he perceives as disinformation campaigns right so there's a uh he established a task force to go after people who gets labeled as disinformation advocates joe biden just did that he he signed it signed in in executive order and and is right now as we speak creating a task force so this is real okay like you guys have way more power than what you think and some people know it some people don't and i think that is kind of an achilles heel to to a lot of our people that we don't understand the power that we have and if you don't know your own power then another person can easily come and just take it from you but once you know what, what type of power th that you really have, you'll do more to kind of to kind of protect it because you will understand its value. Indeed, indeed. So yes, you you brought up you brought up the Senate earlier, and I, and I have a question, right? The Senate is comprised of a majority white majority mm -hmm. anti reparationist coalition on both sides of the aisle. If elected, how will you leverage? your power as a senator 
to force the hands of the other 99 senators to vote yay in favor of a reparations. Exactly. Bill. That's a brilliant question because, um, you know, the Congress is 77 percent white <laughs> and they did a study that most white people disapprove of reparations. Right. And I would say I would even go further. There is nobody in Congress right now, at least not on the federal level that approve of, of real reparations, that's really gonna put their life on the line for reparations, nobody. I would pr probably be the first one um, if I am elected ever. Wait, I'm, I'll re repeat that, my bad. I was reading one of the comments. Can you repeat that last part? Yes, um, if I am elected, I will mm -hmm. be the first one mm -hmm. to actually be willing to put my life on the line to get reparations for our people in Congress. So yes, um, um, it can't be done by just me alone, okay? We're gonna have to, I, I stepped up because we need to get in there and then mm -hmm. after me, it gotta be somebody else, it gotta be somebody else, it gotta, it's mm -hmm. bigger than me, okay? This, this, this no, that's no, right. This that's is right. no, let's get Dion D. Jenkins in there and oh, let's celebrate, no, this is no Obama moment. Let me, let me chime <laughs> so in here. We need to get, as many people as we can in there in country, right. uh, state senator, locally, federally, e even to, to the highest echelon. That's you know, right. Which Let is, me chime in here. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So many of our people been trying to fight, been fighting for reparations to no avail. Mm -hmm. Do you think we really can win that that reparations bill because you have black people telling you I'm not black I'm a I'm a Native American Indian right. you got people fighting against that and then you got people that will say you know I'm more I'm a more I'm not black you got to get rid of the more the black stuff we are not black people and then you got some people saying that we left America to go to Africa. It was in reverse. The slavery was in reverse. So that right there also makes it hard for us to fight because when the when the Jews was fighting for their reparations and getting with their compensation, they was all together in one solid block. We as a people, we are scattered. So does it make it a little um, tougher for us to get our the reason, reparations? The reason why we are so scattered is because it is a stigma in this country to be black. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, being classified as black makes you a stigmatized target. Facts. So people try to find any option. And I explained that earlier. People try to find any option to get out of being black. On the flip side, people try to make excuses for being white. You got black people talking about <laughs> you. My, my, my great granddad was white. My great, great, great granddad. Uh, some even brag about slave owners raping their grandmothers. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I, you know, I got some white in me because my slave owner, woo, 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 he, he, uh, you know, uh, had, had relations with my great, great grandmother. So you have people like that. People look for any reason to opt out of being black. So once there's an incentive, because trust me, and when we're going to need as many black people as we can to get this. Once people see an incentive of being to be black, once we get our true birthright and there is an actual chance of getting our true birthright in this country, trust me, nobody want to pass up their multi-trillion dollar birthright, their $30 trillion down payment birthright. Nobody is going to want to pass that up. Nobody is going to want to pass up the chance that they could get $3.1 million in one check you know, nobody is going to worry, they want to pass up the opportunity of getting sixty five thousand dollars, you know, sixty grand a, uh, a a year with equity every year. OK, this is the reparations package that I've calculated. Nobody is going to want to pass up uh, getting all that land that's going to be distributed. Nobody is going to want to pass up having a real military law enforcement agencies who goes to back for them, a court system that goes to back for them you know nobody's going to pass that up so once we built this nation we should be an elite group in this nation and because we are not is actually a, a violation of the 14th amendment our equal protection uh that equal protection clause is violated 
and the government is breaking its own law by not giving us that equal protection. The 14th Amendment was a specific constitutional law that was created to make the former slaves citizens in this country, but it was negated because it wasn't enforced, at least not enough, right? So if you have a president that really takes that 14th Amendment and really uh, uh, enforce it, if you have Congress people who really enforce that 14th Amendment, you will see a lot change. And trust me, there's not going to be so many people who's not calling themselves black anymore. Even the people who are not descended from slaves, they are going to they are going to reap the benefits of being black. You know, how do you just how do you everything else? Yeah. How do you overcome that anti-black sentiment when running on a reparations platform? And then I'm going to bring on the brother that just came in from Lord Abba's camp. How do you do that, brother? So, like I said, we have to first there have to be an incentive. Right. Because mm -hmm. we live in the world where the win is the winning is team have the most fans. That's just how it is. It's not going to the change, you know, um, I'm out here in the Bay Area, the Warriors. I remember being a youngster, going to games. The, the, you could get a seat for like three dollars. <laughs> that changed drastically as soon as they started winning those championships. Guess what? Prices went up. They have a bigger fan base now, like never before. That's just how it is. So if people don't understand that there's an incentive to being black like there is an incentive to being white they're not going to want to identify with that and they are going to uh not care about the empowerment of it when you understand your value as a people you will do whatever you got to do to protect it but we have so many people who don't understand that value that's why Black men are so willing to kill each other because we don't understand like this black man is actually he might have to fight against me, uh, fight with me one day. If these white supremacists really get out of hand, I'm, I might need this black brother right here to go to arms with me. We don't understand our own value and how we have numbers to actually, um, you know, sway America. But the government white supremacy they know that we have those numbers and they do everything in their possibility to distract <laughs> us and keep our numbers down so to answer your question there must be an incentive for being black N nobody want to be black if it's a stigma if if it's going to get them locked up shot dead no job broke you know nobody wants to deal with that but they'll look for any option and, and, and it sounds messed up, but that's just how life works. That's how the world is. If you don't have an incentive, people do won't will not have the excitement to be part of that. You know, and that's that's just that's, that's just the, uh, the way it is. And blacks who descended from American slaves are going to get reparations. That's one. And that's going to trickle down to everybody else. Because when 14th Amendment rights are being protected, right, or, or being enforced, that's going to make sure that uh, any black person is going to be able to benefit off of being protected, right? Because that's just the 14th Amendment. Everybody gets an equal protection clause, right? So it's going to trickle down to everybody else. And that's why I prioritize this platform is because getting reparations is an American thing because we have to prioritize blacks who are Americans who do not have the uh, enforcement of the law in their favor. And that is against the law. The government is breaking its own law and that is a constitutional American problem. And we must prioritize that. Indeed. So we, we have uh, my brother, Ibrahim. He's the national director of media and public relations for oh. the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen. Also yes, a sir. member yes, of sir. our platform, Be the Power. 
Uh, mm-hmm. You know, for those that watch our platform, you are familiar with our brother Ibrahim, one of one of the sharpest brothers that that I've come across over the last several years. Yes, sir. Uh, brother Ibrahim, uh, you have any questions for the brother? Any observations that you would like to add? Yeah, um, thank you. Peace to everybody that's on the platform. Um, yeah, um, so, you know, reparations is such a serious topic. It, it's something that has been fought for, you know, since blacks have came out of slavery. Um, one thing in your state, in California, with the AB 3121 bill, one of the problems, they don't have the support of the community, right? And this is a bill that's garnered some national media attention. How do you, as a reparations candidate, somebody that leads with reparations on their platform, garner the support of the people? You know, like what does your support look like now and where does it need to be for you to win this? Yeah, uh, well, my uh, uh, my support of the AB 3121 bill, um, uh, I actually reached out to, uh, it's a guy who, who I actually, interviewed who who was on that task force and i had interviewed him on my um on my youtube channel a couple about a year was it a year ago or two years ago but i reached out to him you know what i'm saying and like i reach out like you know i i'll be reaching out to folks all right so if i reach out to you <laughs> i did my job you know and that that's all you know i i'm not going to put the brother's name out there or nothing <laughs> like that but more of of the people supporting you and your candidacy what like What's that? i meant more of the people how what does the people support look like behind you are you like galvanizing the people do you have a lot of support do you have a team um right. what does your team and what does your support look like so it sounds because- sound a little messed up too ibrahim oh okay so what I did to get on the ballot, I had just, uh, uh, like I said, I hired a, you know, like a street team and uh, um, um, shout out to, um, you know, this real good brother. I can't think of his name at the moment, but I got 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 the brothers um, uh, in my contact. I'm probably going to be going to be using them again. Um, we just. You know, he was already old. So I just reached out, reached out and say, hey, brother, hey, man, you want to be a part of this? He said, yeah, let's 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 do it. Um, and he would me, he me, him and other folks would just catch people coming out the stores. Out of liquor stores at the gas station, um, just hitting up people. And I personally um, contacted black people i would specify blacks but he was able to get other groups of people as well like there surprisingly there were white people who signed my petition of lou there were asian people there were all types of people um that helped me get on the ballot so um you have to not be uh, um a lot of people don't want to stand in front of a supermarket and ask people for anything a lot of people don't want to put themselves out there. I'm not saying that they're not doing that, but you got to be willing to get out there and just talk to people and just get and just get out there and just say, look, this is this is who I am. This is what I'm trying to do. Here's my flyer. Check it out. Right. Um, uh, I also I put up posters um, in Oakland and Berkeley in Vallejo. Um, in fact, this poster that you see right behind me is some of the posters I'm putting up, you know what I'm saying? So, so when people are walking by or they're driving by or something, they see your poster, you know? And, um, um, also you got to get other people who know you to spread the word, right? You got to find the people who support what you're doing and network with those people. And say, look, man, let's let's do this. Tell as many people as you can. Um, and last but not least, being on platforms like this help as well. You know, when you got Sonetta and Lord Jamar and DJ K Slay, you know, allowing you to be on their platform, so so you could, you know, let the people know who you are. That helps. 
So all of it helps. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not one or the other or that. It's all working in unison with each other. And um, black people particularly, have, we have a good way of spreading messages. We've done that before social media, before television. We had no access to newspapers or anything like that. And we have a great way of spreading the word. And that's what it's all about. And there are many ways how you spread it, right? Bumper stickers. I got people right now driving around with my bumper sticker. So that helps. When you pass out a bumper, a bumper sticker, right? And a person is driving down the freeway and a person behind them sees your bumper sticker. That helps a lot because we all have been driving on the road. We came upon a stoplight and there was a car in front of us that had a bumper sticker and we all looked at it. That helps. OK, I got hundreds of those all across the Bay Area. All right. So all of it works in your favor. You, you and Oh, yeah. I spend my own money for Facebook ads, right? I spend, I spend thousands of dollars on Facebook ads out of my own pocket, but that's not needed though. You don't need Facebook ads. That's just, that's something I, I do, right? I've been verified by Facebook as a, as a legitimate candidate. And now I'm able to run ads. So all, all of that helps in unison Somebody is going to see you somewhere and be like, yeah, you OK, this is this is legit, because if you have everything working at the same time, that's when people say, yeah, this is legit because I seen him over there. I seen him over there. I saw a bumper sticker. I saw a poster. I want to get a billboard. That's what I really want. But <laughs> that's like that's like 30 grand a month. <laughs> have so, those efforts been able to get you any major endorsements in your state? I haven't even tried to get endo my endorsement. I just want endorsement from the people. I don't want no endorsement because if you get the wrong endorse, like no corporate entity is going is going to give a candidate like myself an endorsement. And if they would, it might not work for me because if you're working for the establishment, I really don't want your endorsement. It's not going to help me with my own people. Some it will, but I'm a grassroots candidate. I want the people to understand just like i'm not taking any uh any money you know i'm not taking any donations i want the people to know that this is legitimate like i'm not in this for me i'm really trying to win i'm trying to get the seat so let we me get reparations let me add what about grassroots organizations do you have any yes ideas? yes so okay. yes so i am i have a meeting with uh i know a person from uh um the, the hip hop of change. It's it's an organization out here. It's a nonprofit organization out here. Uh, Is that in the like in the Bay Area? It's in the Bay Area. Because I'm, yes. I'm and I'm asking because I'm listening to you, and I know that the state the the, the race that you're running mm -hmm. is a statewide race, right? So you're gonna have mm -hmm. to go up that whole strip of of California, right? We're gonna wow. you're gonna have to definitely move outside of the Bay Area and hit right. every part of California. So, you know, that's why I'm asking. Right. Well, and, and we're well, asking about. Mm. Well, I really concentrated in the Bay Area. Um, I haven't physically moved out of the Bay Area yet. Right. Mm -hmm. But I have been reaching out through Facebook ads to Los Angeles, Compton, Watts, Inglewood, Pasadena, California, um, um, you know, I, I used to live in, in Pasadena years ago, um, Burbank, you know, Hawthorne, like these are, are this, these are the cities that I run ads on and I target those ads specifically so they can know that, you know, th uh, there's a candidate out here, but no, I have not, um, reached out well, dr driven to, um, the Los Angeles part or um, the San Diego part as of just yet. You know, just because I want to really concentrate locally first, get this really popping because that's going to spread down there anyway. 
before you go, Ibrahim, when when, yeah. when is your race? When when does the election start? For Great question. Race? Yes, sir. So if you live in the state of California, please listen up. June the 7th, 2022, we need you to come out and vote. I am. Oh, yeah. I look at every single candidate, every opponent that I'm running against in this primary. Not one single person mentioned reparations, even mentioned it. You have a grassroots candidate right now who have reparations as a plat as, as as the centerpiece of his platform. Reparations is at the centerpiece of my platform. Come out and vote. The the final two is going to move on to the general election. And if I get to the final two, it's going to explode. Because me being a hip hop artist and like, uh, you know, um, the type of swag that comes with that is going to be very, very beneficial for the young people. It's going to be influential for the young people. And they are going to be excited to have that type of person in power. OK, so if if you if we could get to the general election, I really have a shot of winning because that's when it's going to take off. Because just me as a candidate that actually have an opportunity is going to inspire a lot of people and they're going to be excited because I'm such of a rare commodity. I'm a, I'm really something that you don't ever see. Right. So because of my uniqueness alone locks, you know, not scared to be for my people reparations platform at the centerpiece, that's going to, Trust me, all those black people who never voted or nothing like that is going to fly to the polls. They're going to fly to the polls because it's going to be an excitement to see that. All right. So let's, um, now let's let's the primary, though. June the 7th, 2022. June the 7th, 2022. Yes, sir. In recent years, within the last year, you actually seen several hip hop artists run for political office. We've seen Willie D. And uh, Scarface run for city county councilor in Houston. I, I believe Willie D missed a sign up, so he had to drop out. And Scarface, uh, he just didn't get enough votes. And you really didn't. They got a lot of publicity, right, because of their name and their acumen outside what they did in the hip hop arena. But that wasn't able to translate to votes. Right. I believe uh, Scarface lost to a to a teacher. And then, you, you know, everybody knows about Kanye West running for president. Um, do you okay, think let, let, let me jump in there just right quick. Let me jump in. So Kanye West wasn't a real candidate. Like he didn't even f sign any paperwork. I don't believe, um, you know, he, uh, he was able to get. Uh, he didn't really take the steps to really run. You know, he, he made an announcement after I made my announcement in 2015. He came out right after me and said that he was running. But that's a whole nother story. But he never really took his candidacy seriously. All right. So if if he would have had if I think that if a guy like Kanye West really took it seriously. He would have a lot more support. And I believe that if he wasn't so. What's the word I'm trying to trying to figure out a nice way to say it if he wasn't so um off off of the top now i'm off the top but i'm off the top in the right way reparations you know being a reparations advocate is off the top for a lot of people but it's in the right way when you are coming out saying that you have emotional problems and you talk to your counselor and you're always in the media for negative things far as like, you know, uh, it, it makes you look not serious. And that's what the media wants wants to do to us anyway. They're going to find any way they can to make us look unserious. Now, with Willie D and Scarface. I don't I'm not sure about their campaign. Uh, my question to you is, um, did they get on the ballot? Did did they? Were they on the ballot or were, were they write-ins or because because I, I don't want to speak on anybody's campaign without knowing the full details of it. 
Willie D ran. He had to drop out because he missed a date to get on the ballot. Scarface yeah. was actually on the ballot, and he had the most notoriety. And there was another lady named Akila. She's not uh, a hip-hop artist, but she ran on reparations a few years ago, and she was able to raise more money than all of her opponents, but she still mm. lost when it came down to, you know, to the voter day. Um, because raising money and, and excitement is not the same thing. And that that's that's a lot of people take raising money. People would donate, and then but they're they donate because they're they think that they're doing something for the, the right cause. But when those J's come out, when those brand new J's come out, that's when you see excitement. When Obama ran back in 20 uh 2008, you saw excitement, right. So if you have excitement behind your campaign, you got to figure out a way how to build excitement. If there's no excitement, it's not going to happen. I don't so so in 2008, hold, hold, hold up. there are billionaires out there who couldn't win, who ran for president and, and get, did not win because they, they didn't have any excitement behind their campaign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but go ahead. So what's your strategy to build excitement? And, and I'll say, because I mm -hmm. asked earlier about the Hey B3121 bill, mm -hmm. having public notoriety, but not being able to get people power behind it, right? Just not being able to get the community involved as of now. You, you're you one of 24 candidates, right? I believe 10 are Democrats, six are Republican, and eight are Independent or Green Party. How do you build excitement behind your candidacy and behind your message? Well, like I said, I got people driving right now with with bumper stickers with with my name on it. Uh, Dion D. Jenkins reparations for the U.S. Senate. They got that on their bumper stickers. So, um, you, you know, what I'm saying like like I don't have the excitement I need uh, to win the general election yet, but. I'm trying to build that excitement to actually win the primaries enough to make it to the final two. Um, and I'm, I'm out here every day, you know, um, letting the people know I'm having a different experience when I'm walking up to these people, they are very excited and they all tell me, Hey man, I'm gonna vote for you, bro. Yeah, we need this. So I don't know. It may be different for, for everybody. Um, I'm not experiencing that. Um, I think what's, what's helping me as well is that, they understand that it's not just about me. Like I'm not just trying to win to start a career. Like this is a, a, a real movement that I'm in. Like I put reparations above my name. See, my name is, at, is right here, right? Reparations is above it and bigger. You know, that that's that's the movement. It's not about me. I'm I'm just a a soldier in this movement carrying out the plan but i think because in california we do have a, a reparations movement um you know um I, i'm not sure if those if that task force don't have excitement though because i'm hearing people a lot talk about that bill you know um, well that's what he said he said it know, has that, the excitement it just doesn't have the people power meaning the people in the community there's not enough not Gotcha. grassroots on the ground people really pushing that thing it has social media you know when i got i was in, interviewed uh by chub rock last year mm -hmm. for our juneteenth right. uh reparations rally that we held out here in atlanta georgia and you know chub rock asked asked me about the california reparations bill and in the direction that newsom was trying to go with the bill etc so you know, we we talked about that on air, right? right. And, and that I think that radio station is heard in sixteen different states. So you know, the I think what what Ibrahim is talking about, in so far as the bill having excitement, he's re relating that to your situation. In right. so far as building up that excitement, you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, I'm about to drop the hottest track in in california history you know what i'm saying i'm about to spit some bars and I, i'm about to get everybody excited right that's how i'm gonna think about it and, and, yeah, I, yeah, and yeah. i've heard you spit 
And I would tell you, if I would have talked to you three months ago, right. I'd have been like, look, bro, this is what we going to do. I'm going to talk to some of my people. I'm going to get you some of these New York beats, right? right. I'm going to get you some right. of these beats right. from over right. here. We're right. going to draft some stuff together. <laughs> we're going we gonna to get these tracks right. popping. Right. Then we're going to try to build you up, for, you know, just on, yes, on the excitement. To, again, I'm going to disagree with you on the money. If I was your campaign manager, I would be not beating okay. people's door down. I'll tell you what, not money to cut, in you, the off. Not to cut and, you off. Not to cut okay, you off. brother. If you really want to donate, here's what you do. Buy the album. I have a brand new album called The Black Vote. Now, I'm using my money, my own money out of my own pocket to fund this. But if you really want to be a contributor like that, if you like, hey, brother, I, I want to help you out financially, buy The Black Album. I mean, Okay, now album. I got to cut you well, off. I got to cut you vote. off, right? Yeah, yeah. I, right. I believe the limit of a donation is, is $2,500. How right. if somebody is really feeling you and they're like, I want to do, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to just go do 20, you know, however wanna, many, 29.99 divided by 20. I don't want to do it like that because I'm looking at it like this. If I don't win, that's going to be used against me, right? And and I don't want to take a person's money without giving them something. I, it's just something about that I just don't feel right doing well, that. Well, let me say, yeah. you're giving them the representation that they do not have. This is why but I got to win, though. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. And yeah. this is where the financial part right. is is extremely vital because it allows you to expand mm -hmm. more. It allows you to get right. that billboard in Los Angeles. You never know. You know, right. some rapper that might hear your tracks and be like, "Man, this cat is fire. He's running for office. What right. you trying to do? A billboard? I got you, brother. You see right. what I'm saying? So right. you know, there, there's definitely certain ways that we could look at it from that angle of hip hop and approach it and, right. and build that excitement. Yeah. You know, and I, and I wish we, we could have built a, a several months ago, hell, even a year ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but the only so it issue, is what it is. Right. But but the only issue is that, yeah, if a rapper say, yeah, man, I want to I want to help you out, man, I'm going to buy you a billboard. Um, You know, um, you know, I wouldn't say I wouldn't take it. Like, I wouldn't say I would like I would have a conversation with him, though, and say, look, um, this is what I'm about. I'm about reparations. Um, are you willing to give me this thirty thousand dollars? Because that's how much it's going to take. And are you comfortable if I don't win? Right. I can win, though. I can win. And but I really want to focus on making sure that the people vote, that they come out and vote. Everybody don't have money like that. Everybody don't have a lot of money to give into campaigns. Our people are our people are displaced. Like that's why I got that right there. I wanted to make sure that people know that this is a reparations of uh, 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 reparations first candidacy. All right. So if people understand that, and if you're not trying to get money from them more excitement can can happen because now they know that okay he's sincere like that's a way to prove that you're really sincere i'm taking money out of my own pocket but if somebody is like look man i got a hundred thousand dollars for you right now man i will have a meeting with them i'll be like okay this is this this is that this is that okay this is going to help me a lot but like there's no guarantees right there are no guarantees now you would give me a better shot at winning, but there's no guarantees, and I don't need that to win. I will let him know that. But as far as just everyday regular people, you know, I um, I would rather not. Um, but if you really do, if you want to give something, just buy the album. You know, buy the album. Oh, uh, let me let me ask too. Um, yeah, when you you've been doing this for a minute. Yeah. Since, when you look at the condition in the when you look at the condition and the mindset of our people, mm -hmm. do you think that we still have a childlike mentality when it comes to issues like this? And I say that based off of when I'm doing shows like Hebrews versus Kemet or so-and-so, mm -hmm. things like that, you will have thousands of people in here. But when I do shows like economics and politics and mm -hmm. stuff like that you bring in like maybe 500 
300 or 400 people. It's always like that on my platform. And right. so that's why I'm, I'm saying, do you think that we still have a childlike mentality when it comes to real issues? And our people always say, yo, man, we need to do something. We need to change. We need to do this. But then when we bring in the people to educate us on that, they don't have the patience to listen to that. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. Well, uh, oh yeah, and, and uh, just to clarify about the hundred thousand dollars, I couldn't take the hundred thousand dollars. That uh, that was just an, an example because it's illegal to take one hundred thousand dollars. But um, to 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 um, answer your question is that I would hate to say childlike mentality because um, I don't want to offend people like that. Uh, what I would say <laughs> is that. Yeah. We get distracted. We get distracted very easily because when you put entertainment as a priority in your life, then all it takes is for somebody to entertain you, to distract you from what you really need in life. OK, we all need to, uh, to eat apples and oranges and spinach and greens and kale. But if if a person is giving you a slice of pizza instead or a hamburger instead or a candy bar instead, if you're not psychologically disciplined to be like, I need to get what I need, then you will be distracted with the candy bars and the hamburgers and the pizzas. And you're going to die earlier and you're not going to be a fully healthy individual. So that's what you have in American politics with black people as of right now. But I do see change though. Like I'm like 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 I'm in these streets. There is a a awakening of people. I I'm meeting young folks who like, look, hey man, I'm glad you are independent because if you would have told me that you was a democrat, I wouldn't have voted for you. I, I had people tell me that. If if you would have been democrat, republican or any of those, I had youngsters tell me that. So I do see a change shifting. And that's why I try to make it a little more entertaining with with the rap and all that, even you know, um, because I had a lot of people criticize me for using rap and politics in the same atmosphere, right? But and then I always kind of shut it down because I'm like, look, I'm a hip hop artist. I'm using my platform as a way to build um, this platform up. So there's nothing wrong with that, and hip hop is the voice of the streets brother if you want to why don't you play that track you can play the track that me and lord abba was talking about w uh which track which one was that lord abba it was the one that was on the home page but before you do that i i want to i want to i yes. got because you bring you're bringing up hip-hop and 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 i listened to the interview with you and lord jamal yes maya chavez uh be the power is a political education and political advocacy platform. Make sure y'all subscribe to our channel, Be The Power. And we also have another channel called BTP Media Group. So Lord Jamal, and, and I've heard him say this on several of occasions yeah. when speaking about reparations, right? His his arguments are, and I don't say this in a, in a disrespectful way, his arguments are based out of ignorance. He doesn't know enough about the topic, right? So he'll say something like my parents or my ancestors, although one came from, I, I can't remember which country, that he feels that they should be included in the reparations claim. And you told him that there weren't a lot of black immigrants in this country up until the 1960s. We know that there weren't many black immigrants. So, you know, People personalize stuff because they don't have the breadth of the knowledge needed to properly express the, the subject that they are trying to speak about. And we see that with, with Lord Jamal. So how do you, because we have our way of, of breaking that down, but I, I want you to explain to the people, right? The We use the term American freedmen because that was the status that was given to our ancestors after slavery. That is the status that we have resurrected. And that is the, the, the name that has catched, caught fire 
all over social media and is reaching several media platforms. So when when people are talking about immigrants, and then you could go into your stance on on immigration as well. Black immigrants in particular receiving or that they should receive reparations because their ancestors immigrated, migrated to a country where racism was being practiced. It's like, you know, you can't go into a a, a house that's (laughs) that's burning Mm -hmm. and then get mad that that the flames got on you. Well, Mm -hmm. what do you how do you respond to that? What is typically your response? Oh, yeah. First of all, I want to shout out to Lord Jamar. Um, you know, he he really is one of the pioneers that um, inspired me. One of them, at least as a youngster who wanted to, to get into hip hop, you know, watching him and watching brand Nubian take stances that a lot of people can take uh, guys like him and Public Enemy and um, KRS-One and Tupac Shakur. Like like these guys stood up and they spoke against even acted against white supremacy. So, and right, what, what he's doing right now is legendary. And he had a lot of guts to, to put me up there and to actually have a platform. So he actually contributed to helping me um, get on the, ba- and we're well, not on the ballot, but helping the people understand that they have a representative out here. Cause you'd be surprised the, 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 some of the main people who you listen to passed on it. All right. So, I salute him for that. All right. Number two, we do have a disagreement with, with just a minute. We do have a disagreement with how the distribution of reparations should be established. And I think that it's a understandable disagreement. However, I was to say this, that Lord Jamar would qualify because he is a descendant of Blacks who descended from American slaves. So he's just speaking up for the people who may say, well, I'm not from out here. Like his great grandfather would not have qualified for that, not that specific legislation. So I think what it was with him, he just didn't have a true understanding of where I was coming from. He didn't understand that, yes, there's going to be a lot. I'm going to have many legislations for black people, but reparations is for blacks who descended from American slaves. And you cannot um, give reparations to a person who, like you said, decided to come here. They decided to come here. They chose to be here, right? They didn't help build the country. That that's that's one of the things that people don't really talk about. They're they're not they wasn't really involved with building up the American infrastructure that we have today. So legally it won't work because if you take it to on a you know, you know, it's it's going to get shot down legally because the government can all, always go back and say, well, we're not responsible for them. And they have a bigger argument, a better argument. Because, you know, um, they're absolutely correct, you know. So what we have to to understand is people might have a difference of, of opinions and there's nothing wrong with, with having a reparations package specifically for blacks who descended from American slaves. If you there's nothing wrong with that, you're not going to miss out on anything being black in this country. Because there are going to be a lot of policies that I implement that's going to affect all black people. And I say that unapologetically, right? My goal is to help all black people in this country and abroad, okay? And we are not going to destroy white supremacy if we are not unified. We're not going to destroy it. We need, we're going to, if if God ever allow me to become president, I want to help Africa establish that the United States of Africa, something that Gaddafi had in plan and they killed him for that. I want to help. I have foreign agendas. I want to make sure that Israel recognized black Hebrews, you know, the real the real Hebrews. I have a lot of plans that's foreign and domestic. All right. But 
this policy here, reparations, this right here, my DMLG defense money land grants, something that I am published and credited for, for establishing, establishing a true definition for reparations constructed from the four elements of society because I did research that every element in the world, every society in the world have four things in common. They have a, a defensive structure, which consists of a, of a military law enforcement agencies and a, and a court system. They have every nation in the world have an economy, the flow of currency. Number two, every nation in the world have land, a place to reside on, and every nation in the world have a way to access that economy, right? So, because because you could be the rich, because uh, you could live in the richest nation in the world and be homeless and be destitute. So I I'm published for that. Like I I um I am solidified for establishing that for our people. And you could look that up, and I'm sure that you did. My DMLG package is set in stone. They're going to be talking about that for hundreds of years. Um, you sound good, but you ain't getting in, in talking like this. Uh, okay. Uh, I would disagree because we have a lot of black people out there who will support me. So I, I am... Well, well, Charles Barron in New York, he was one of the most blackity black, powerful political uh, right. activists out there, and he got in. So I disagree with that, right. too. And see, that's right. one of the things that our people are scared to be themselves, brother. And this is why this brother is running on his own. This is why the brother is saying he don't need their financial support. Because right. he know once he take their money, he got to adhere to them. The brother know what he's doing. Right. He know what he's talking about. Go ahead, yes. brother. Yes, sir. So I establish a package because I understand that you cannot get true reparations, reparations. Re reparations is the extension word from its root word that's meaning repair. Repair meaning to mend the damage, to construct from a, a destruction cause, to make whole. So if we're going to get true reparations, the only way that we're going to be able to do that is by acknowledging the four elements of society. If we do not do that, it's incomplete. You know, it, it is completely incomplete. And we would not be, be able to destroy the system of white supremacy. And that's what reparations is supposed to be. It's supposed to put you on an equal level because if you, if you are on an equal level, that means white supremacy cannot exist. I'm gonna say that again. If you are on an equal level with white folks in this country, that means white supremacy can't exist because white supremacy is just that. It is supreme over everything. So we have to be on an equal level. So they can have so they cannot have power over us. That's what reparations is. And and if it's not that, it's not complete. So I'm published in many publications or establishing that for our people. And um um so, yes, um, you know, um, this is what I'm doing. And reparations is for blacks who descended from American slaves. But we can do that and still have policies for our black people all around the country. Uh, this is California District 20, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, no, what hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that? It's California what? District 20. No, the no. The Senate seat that you're from? No, no, no. This is for this is a federal seat. Well, this is for um, it's a class section three seat. So it's, it's just, so OK. So y y you have your House of Representatives, right? So you have different uh, districts and all of that. And then you have your Senate, federal, federal Senate, not state senators or anything. Your federal Senate, there are only two in every state. So there are 100 all together in this in the whole country. I am one of those. I'm in that. I'm trying to get in that echelon. You know, that's the most powerful branch in legislation. It's it starts off with the house, the uh, house of Rep, the uh, house house of representatives, and it builds up to the Senate. So legislation gets started off there, and then it builds up, and we have to sign it. 
um, actually we have to vote it in and then we take it to the president and he either signs it or veto it. But I could write legislation. So I, I want to make that clear. How do you, how will you overcome, um, we've seen the pushback from reparations once it become became lineage based for AB321 mm -hmm. from the Latinos and the Asians. You also seen um, um, the Asians come out and strike down um, a policy during last presidential election that mm -hmm. would help black Americans, right? Mm -hmm. And they've been staunch in that and like everything that comes up, race base is getting shut down. How do you sell reparations in California, when the demographic is mostly Latino, and it's less than six percent right. black, and it has one of the the it has the especially in your district, right? It has the highest cost of living, and and it was also the area that generated the most money in America. You have this great, you know, vast difference between wealth inequalities. The last time I was in Oakland. Um, it was very damning because I seen black families living in tent cities, right? Yeah, homeless. Now, They're homeless you, out here. Yes, you know, sir. Sell that to the population when there's this large difference between the haves and the have-nots, and most of them are not black. I mean, well, um, you came a little later. I kind of broke down the real demographics. Uh, I, I, I said that uh, most black people don't take any census forms. That's that's one. So it's way more than us. A lot of us have whole families who never never took the census at all a day in their life. And then you have black people who are mixed, who classify as as mixed. Right. So they have black lineage. And then you you have black people who classify as, as other groups like Asian, Hispanic and all of that. And they look for a way to opt out of being black, because we all understand that when you classify yourself as black you are stigmatized in this country so we have way more numbers than what's accounted for the government knows that we have way more numbers that's why they spend trillions of dollars to lock us up get us killed you know not give us jobs separate the black men from the women the lgbt propaganda is running rampant right now you can't even see a black man and a black woman together on tv anymore so they have a lot of um, uh, propaganda uh, going out and and we have the numbers to actually get elected. We, we can actually win without a single Asian vote, a single Hispanic vote and a single white vote. However, you're looking at a candidate that can get a little bit of, of, of the white vote and the Asian vote and the Hispanic vote. I didn't think I could, but a lot of those people signed my petition and I was shocked. They did because uh, uh, one of the guys who I had working for me would tell me, yeah, man, some of these white people, they're signing it. So, you know, I'm not going to get the majority of white folks. Hell no, nah. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to get the majority of Asians. No, but if we we could just steal here, steal a little trinket here, a little percentage here, a little a little percentage here and then have a, a, a grassroots candidate who stick up for black people who have a black excitement base we can win the numbers are way bigger my brother so and um um yeah and 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 and, and, and a lot of they're trying to get hispanics to vote more but they also have that same problem as as well they don't really vote like that they, they got the same issue as blacks um like we don't vote like that they don't vote like that either so if 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 we could build excitement in voting with black people we can win yeah all right are y'all ready to open up the phone lines brother you want to take some calls i'm all for that <laughs> yes, family brother. family this is the time call it in do y'all have a serious question that can help um move this movement y'all we need a serious question let's call it in I'm surprised my brother, Dr. Reggie, ain't watching. Reggie would have been called then to talk about his Black City plan. You ever heard of the Black City plan, brother? No, I haven't. All right, by a brother by the name of Reggie. 
you know, he put together what? this Black City plan. Which, uh, uh, which city? In New York City. Okay, nah, I'm wrong. But I think it goes for every city. I know about it now, it. though. Okay. I know about it now, so I'm going to look them up. Okay, there you go. Yep. There you go. All right, family, let's get these callers in, y'all. Let's call it in, man. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. I'm saying our people. Uh-oh, here we go. We got one caller. There I'm you go. I'm in Rama Car. Peace and Black Power, family. What's your name? Where you calling from? I'm in Rama Car. All right, what's going on, I'm in Ra? What's, what's up, brother? How you doing? All right. Peace to the panel. Peace to Lord Abba and uh, the brother that's running DR. Uh, I'm proud of you, brother. I'm with you. I mean, I'm in Tennessee, so I can't vote for you, but I'm with you. I know if you get in there, that you can help us, all black people in America, African you know, African Americans in America, at some at some level. Uh, yeah. And um, but as, I was just wondering, what are some of your other stances on other critical things that are affecting? black Californians, you know, like crime and health and those kind of things that, that you could also piggyback along with the reparations because I know that's a... I'm, I'm not going to say pie in the sky, but I, I believe it can happen. But that, like, like you even said, that's down the road because you can't do it alone. But if you were to get in, there are some things that need immediate attention uh, mm -hmm. for blacks in California. What are some of those things that, that distance you from other candidates? Uh, and that's, that's all I want to know. Yeah, well, the reason why we see so much of of the dysfunction is because we are displaced in this country. And um, my number one um, solution to that is reparations. That's why I'm running on that platform. So uh, my main goal is to m make sure that we get the, the reparations in mind. Now, the homelessness... Um, you know, as far as crime, that's more of a propaganda thing, because if they really wanted to stop crime, um, they can, first of all, create more opportunities for people. Right. And number two, um, you know, they would, you know. You know, if 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 you go out there and, and, and rob a white person or, or kill or kill a white person, they'll solve that crime overnight. So a lot of these things are being allowed to happen so they can crack down. Right. So my issue, uh, you know, I mean, my main concern is to make making sure that we actually solve the problem. And the only way that we can solve the problem is this right here. You got to repair it. Right. And I have a reparations package that I'm going to write as soon as I get in there. I'm, I'm going to write this legislation into in in, in effect so it at least be there so when we finally galvanize enough people we could get get people and we could actually um put it in front of a president you know hopefully it'd be me <laughs> and i could sign it in, into law mm. and that's that's my strategy so um I mean, right. everybody have their own you know their own strategy okay, bro. that's that's my strategy all right thank you i'm in Ra. I appreciate it. All right. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name? Where you calling from? Oh, uh, thank you, Metro uh, Customer. Is, said, I'm in California. He got my vote. Thank you. Yes, sir. Or ma'am or whoever you are. Yes. Peace. What's your yes. name? Where you calling from? Uh, this is Juvenile Capatis. All right. What's going on, Juvenile? Hi. How are you? I have a question um, for Dion. And peace to the panel. Peace, peace. Lord Eva. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've been hearing you talking about really not wanting to um, take other people's money, uh, take other people's money um, <clears throat> due to you because, you know, that'll cause you to, um, if they did a favor, you would owe a favor. But however, this is politics. And then your platform and your, and what you're talking about, it is giant. So when you're talking about politics, whether it be on the, especially if you're on the local level and you're trying to, do, you're going to need funding, funding and a team. That is going to be how you brought in your platform here. So what other reasons other than you don't want to owe a favor do you uh, have uh, for I not? I never said that. I never said I, don't, I never said I don't want to owe a favor. Like that's not what I said. 
and I, I'm going to continue. I'm going to re repeat what I said. I said that I do not want to take money because I need to show that this is sincere. I'm taking money out of my own pocket. Rather, you give it right, to me or right somebody there. else give it to me. What's that? See, that's the part right there when you say you're taking money out of your own pocket. Usually, mm -hmm. um, when you have a when you have a team and they're going out. Um, helping you with this cause, helping you to champion your cause, you're using other people's money. And whether you win or lose, it is the entire experience of everyone rallying behind uh, a person that they think that will uh, help them in their cause. So even if you don't win this seat, you actually help the community and you actually help people around you because they were involved in this process. So this is really, you know, it's again, it's it's broad and it's good what you're doing. I think it's fantastic, but I just think that you need to think on how is it going to not affect change, but affect change, and down the line bring everyone together for what it is that you're trying to um, well, combat here. Yeah, I think you you missed what I was trying to say. I said that I would rather take that excitement and get everybody to come out and vote. Um, there, there's there's nothing wrong with we take we taking that same excitement that we have to give somebody some money to just come out and vote. And we use what we have to spread the word. Black people have been spreading word since before any type of media that we had access to. We, we are very good at that. So we just use that same power and just revolutionize in, in a way that we access that excitement into getting people out to vote. And um, I said also, I said that, um, you know, a lot of our people don't have money. And sometimes with, a, with, with uh, wait, 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 let me finish. Sometimes with a campaign, when you have a black man with locks and stuff and he's asking for money, people, their mind just immediately go somewhere. They're not going to look at mm -hmm. me like they look at Governor Newsom who's asking for that same dollar. They're going to be more judgmental, okay? And they can no, use that. Yeah, I, and that's why I wait, disagree wait, with you, Ed. Yeah, hold on, finish. sister. Hold on, no, sister. Let me, finish. Let me finish. No, go ahead. Let me finish. They can use that say that against me psychologically. Now, sure, if if I take money, it's the same money that Governor Newsom take and, every, and everybody else. But the psychological effect of that, they might think, oh, uh, this nigga hustling right and they might not even tell me that but it's going to just turn them off because they don't understand politics right so what you're saying is yeah yeah if we, if, if, if we could get people on the culture of giving black people money without judgment then yeah i'd be like hey where y'all donations at let's run it let's let, let, shoot let's shoot let's get a million dollars but we're not on that phase yet sister you know what i'm saying like we're not on that level yet Okay, well, that's fair. You're not on that page yet. Now, see, that's what, because that, that, that's where it is, and that's what I hear. You're just not on that page yet. So my question, another question would be real quick, is have you ever helped anyone else in their elections? Have you ever helped anyone else to become, you know, just sit on the boards or any committees or anything like that locally? Have you ever been involved in that process before, before you? Um, actually, no. Uh, I wasn't involved with no other, okay. no, no other, no other politicians because I don't trust politicians. I didn't get in it. I didn't get in this to be mm -hmm. a politician. I get, I, I got in this to get reparations. So, so if I don't really know you, and if you're not talking about this right here, I'm probably not going to vote for you. I'm, I'm probably not going to give you any money. I'm probably, I, I'm, uh, I'm gonna probably shun you like the white man shunned my campaign because I'm talking about this right here. So, yeah, if you're not talking about reparations, if you're not bold like I am to stick up for black people in America, I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah, I just think that if you were if, if after this experience here, you should probably sit on and sit in really kind of champion behind some other local um, politicians just to see Ooh. how the process um kind of you know kind of goes and that will also to give you so, more momentum for the next time that you that you, you do this because you, you're on the right track but it's just a little bit more to it who would you recommend that's it and, and i will look them up who would you recommend well, well i'm from 
I'm actually from California, but I'm not really familiar with people um, okay, in so Oakland. And actually, not, and I'm not even familiar with and a lot of the and a lot of the and a lot of the people. You, you got to give an endorsement to somebody like like you can't make a bold statement like that and accuse me. Well, of, I live in Kansas City, right? Of, but but no, 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 so my, no, so, no, no. You, you can't make an accusation that I'm not supportive of grassroots candidates, and you can't even give me your own endorsement. Like I, I told no, 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 no. I, that's I not no, no. See, you now you're turning this into a debate, and so why, I'm not here. I'm not here to debate with you. That's not. That's not. That's not what it's on. Because if that was the case, you have U.S. Senate in front of your name, but you're saying you're not a politician. So, but I'm not here to debate back and forth with you. I'm just simply saying because here where I live at, actually, there are quite a few people. Emmanuel Cleaver. There's his sons. There's all types of people here in Kansas okay. City where we're involved. On the local level of the okay. process, are they getting the word out, helping, are helping. They, are they pushing okay. reparations? But you ask. Uh, that's a question. But you but ask. Are they pushing reparations? That's a question. They are not pushing reparations, but what I'm saying is that you're not pushing the go. full scope of politics either. There you go. Well, I didn't get into it to the full right? scope of politics. I got into it to repair blacks who descended from American slaves. I want reparations. I did not get into it for a career. I did not get into it for celebrity status. Um, I got into it for reparations. Okay. That's it for black people. If you're not, and, and and I'm going to repeat this. If you're not talking about reparations, if you if you're not putting that at the forefront of your campaign, I would not support you. I would not, not donate to you. I would not do anything for you. Okay. Okay. Hold on, hey sister, okay. sister. Okay. Did you uh -huh. did you just say then he's not talking about nothing? He's talking about reparations. No, 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 that's not what I said. No, what, what I did said you was, say? I thought I heard you say, well, then he ain't talking about nothing. No, then I said as far as he's concerned, other people are not talking about nothing. Oh, other well, people are not concerned about no, 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 you admitted that. You yeah, admitted see, that. See, yeah, see, he, he's tailoring it to like one, to one, to one thing instead of, but that's, I think that's where McCarthy was too, when he was saying, what are your other stances? I'm a well, shouldn't you, put, I'm, shouldn't you put together a solid block behind, behind one thing for the moment that we all should be fighting for? And I think it would be more powerful like politics. that. A solid block. We got to come together and fight for something, sis. I mean, come on now. We're talking about reparations. Hey, all love. We're talking about no, reparations. reparations is very important. All and, I, and I actually thought. And all yeah, the other candidates is not. They took right. that off the platform. Because that's that's how they feel about you. They say, nigga, y'all niggas don't deserve no damn reparations. That right there in itself should be like, yo, man, I'm backing this, brother. We need our reparations. I don't. I don't know why that's so damn hard for our people. No, it's not. But you got. But this is a singular cause, and so I just wanted to sit here and make sure I understood what you were. No problem. Okay. Okay. No. No problem, my sister. Yeah. No yeah. Problem. No yeah. problem. Yeah. This is a singular you. cause, and may, I get it. Yahweh I get it. Thanks. Yeah. May Yahweh bless Thanks. you. And peace. And peace to the chat. Peace, sister. Bye bye. Yes. All right. All right. Um, you had another brother in, in the chat and he put and he got a full beard too. <laughs> He's a grown ass man. And he put in the chat, he said, um, this is like fantasy, fantasy land for I you mean, to be talking about reparations, for you to be running. It's like fantasy land. I'm like, what the what's wrong with y'all people, man? There are a lot of people who do support though. Like I mean yes. every day. Yes. There are so so good. Every, one person that's like this is like ten of them that's like, yeah, man, I'm gonna vote for you. So that's right. You know, and and a lot of people don't, you know, you know, they don't really believe it can happen, and they don't like black men being in charge. That's what it really is. Mm -hmm. too. you know, they they would rather see Conference. Biden. You know, a lot of these people voted for Biden. So <laughs> yes. All right, peace and black power, family. What's your yeah. name? Where you calling from? Rashid, peace. Peace, Rashid. Where you calling from, brother? I'm calling from Brooklyn. All right, Brooklyn in the building. What's up, man? All right, so um, uh, um, I, I got it on pause, but we still got Dion there. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's here. I'm, I'm right here, sir. All right, um, all right. So 
the, the main the main thing about the don't the don't vote thing is that whites are voting, and that um, for example, if we don't vote for president, all we're going to get is a, a, is a presidential candidate that whites like better than. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 it, it seems like he's throwing away our political power. So how how do you feel about that? Well, not voting. Uh, if you wait to vote until November, candidates like myself don't even get mm-hmm. to the final election, right? So, oh, that, you, oh I hundred percent agree with that. If a guy like myself is not at in the general election, what what are you voting for anyway? It don't matter, you know. Red. No, that, that, I disagree wait, with wait, that. Wait, You're wait, saying wait. it don't matter between any. Uh, uh, let no, me finish. No, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. I'm let you finish. Yeah. I'm, I apologize. Like okay, so. I now it's two wings, birds on the same on the same um, two wings on the same bird, or rather, is conservative. We're not not conservative, but Republican or Democrat, right? None of them have any interest for us. None of them do. So, what matters if you vote for Trump or Biden? What difference does it make? Trump is not going to help you. Biden is not going to help you. He's not going to enforce your 14th amendment rights right so right now we're in a process of we are being taxed without representation this whole country was built well not built but white white people fought and 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 was able to get independence from great britain because of taxation without representation all right they were upset because they were being taxed without having any representation in congress or or no type of political power at all and they fought a whole war because of that so they were willing to die forget about voting the the they didn't they they you know they wasn't like where i'm a i'm a just support the king because or the queen because hey there's nobody else to vote for or to support they said nah we we're through with this movement we don't want to be a part of their system and they just started their own so if you don't have any representation, what are you voting for anyway? You vote for candidates like myself. I'm your representative. I represent the people like yourself. We have to have equal access to representation. We don't have that. And that is a violation of the Constitution. So if they're violating your rights to, to, to have equal representation, okay, if they're violating your rights to have equal representation in politics you don't vote for any of them all right put your phone on mute until it's your turn to speak please put your phone on mute all that strategy does is make white votes more powerful gotcha that's a very powerful that's a very that's a very bad strategy that's a very and telling that strategy to black people is very counterproductive And, and explain why why because um there are different there are there are different power sources in the country and there are more. There, there are whites who, for example, want to. Uh, there are whites who, who want to um, push push us back, and there are whites who want to keep us where we are, and go and and if we don't vote, then whites will vote for the people who are most hostile to black people, and um, the, the the two wings are not the same. It's the idea that there's no difference between Obama and um and Romney. There's no no difference between Trump and Hillary. There's no difference between Trump and Biden. The idea that um neither the idea that um that 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 just let white people choose and will and whoever they choose will be fine that that or that just makes whites more powerful. That's the whole reason why they literally um had Jim Crow. They literally had um had poll taxes because they didn't want black people to vote. Exactly because when black people vote, it makes whites white votes less powerful. Now whites are a majority of the country, and we cannot. By black people, it, we, we 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 in real life can't make you president, and I, I wish that wasn't the case. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean that any every white who runs is the same, and it also doesn't mean that the white who gets seventy five percent of the white vote or sixty percent of the white vote is the same as the white who gets forty percent of the white vote. So yeah, so 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 yeah, so this, so the 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 strategy of Let's not vote. Let's 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 act the same way we acted in 1963 before the Voting Rights Act, and that's gonna that's gonna get us reparations. What that's gonna do is it's gonna get more people in. Um, it's gonna put more people in the Supreme Court who's gonna call the call reparations unconstitutional. 
So it, it, I have a question. It, 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 right. You're pushing us away from that. Uh, uh, let me, let me, if I, if I thank can, you, brother Dion, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I, this, this idea, because I've, I've been seeing that lately about reparations being un, unconstitutional, right? But I want to, let me, let me, I want to show the people something real quick because you know we this is why we teach what we teach on on be the power man and and it's important that people get a political education and you know it's it's not enough of that going around so I'm not can you just share that real quick I'm I'm not going to go through it I just want people to see it all right this is from the University of Massachusetts and it shows every single time reparations was paid in the United States, and it says an historical timeline, right? A historical timeline of reparations payments made from 1783 through 2021 by the United States government, states, cities, religious institutions, universities, corporations, and communities. And as you can see, it's a long, long list, a long list. And it starts with our freedmen plight here in the United States of America, most of which failed. And we are, you know, it's part of the reason why we're at where we are today, still fighting for reparations. Then you get into 1900s to 1949, all Indians, just about, uh, yeah, all, all of them, 1950 to 1969, all Indians with the exception of 1969. So most of this are, are reparations that have went to the Indians, for instance. Uh, in 1980, $81 million was given to the Klamaths of Oregon. In 1974, a $10 million out of dollar out of court settlement was, was reached to the uh, between the U.S. government and the victims of the Tuskegee experiment, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in 1985, $31 million was given to the Chippewas. Uh, and in the same year, $12.3 million was given to the Seminole. Like, the, this idea that rep reparations is unconstitutional it is, is just simply false. And we have to, uh, we urge people to come to our platform. Good work, God. Have a good work. And get this good political education so you could understand. And maybe, you know, we'll come on, Sonetta, one day, the team and I, and, and you know, and, and, and have a discussion and answer people's questions so that they could leave from this platform, a little better educated than when they first called in. Yes. Yeah, and, and right. I would like to. Uh, I would like to respond uh, to that brother. Is is he still online? No, no, he's gone. I got a California yeah. on the line waiting okay. to talk. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me yeah, respond to him uh, because what you have to uh, understand is that I hear that argument a lot. If we don't vote for the general establishment candidates, then you know we give <clears throat> white people more power. My question is, how do you not give them more power by voting for them? And and just because uh, if if nobody is if, if nobody have a black agenda, and if nobody is upholding your constitutional rights, what difference does it make for you? Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm. Let me get this call, and then I'm gonna bring on the brother Ibrahim. I know he probably got something to say. Um, caller, gang, what's your name? Where you calling from? Facts over feelings. Calling from Richmond, California. You All put right. my um comment up, comment up in the um uh, thing on the seven six four is the code. So let me explain. I have nothing against what the brother talking about reparations, but we are from the Bay Area, California. First, we have to talk about the policies, and this was the, what the sister was trying to tell you. We have policies out here that's against us and against all these um, demographics. Reparations, what he's pushing for, is nothing wrong for us. But when you got it, you got to think about they got the new crime bill out here. That's up with the gang violence. What grassroots people that you asked for that he was asking? We have Barbara We have Robert. We have Robert Wilson's over here in Oakland, California. Okay, in Vallejo, California, this is the second. Oakland, California right now is the number one violent crime city in California. Vallejo is number two. Richmond, number five. San Francisco is number six. What are you going to do to combat when is all you're talking about is reparations? We have people that's homeless. We have jobs that's being lost. We have people that's leaving California. And that has nothing to do with reparations. It's not going to stop that. So let me, I'm just asking that right now, sir. 
Yeah, sure. So uh, I, I think you missed a lot of the broadcast when I explained what reparations mean. Reparations is the extension word from, uh, from the root word repair. Repair meaning to mend damage, to construct from a destruction caused, to make whole. Um, all of those issues that you've addressed, sir, can be solved with reparations because you you are repairing the damage. One sec, one second, sir. One second, sir. All them issues that I just said don't it has nothing to do with reparation, but it has to do with the foundational family and what's going on with the father and the mother and all this stuff that's going on with the parents and the children and the despise that's going on. That has nothing to do with reparations, sir. I'm in I'm in Richmond, California, in the Bay Area every day, and we in these schools where we trying to help these kids get out of this game. We we in STEM, we in coding. What does that have to do with reparations, sir? I'm talking yeah. about the family that has been broken. Sorry, 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 hold on. The family that has been broken, that we got to come back together as a unit that the village can raise these children again from elders to the child because we have a dysfunctional and a discourse between each other because the elders thinking they better and the youngsters like, man, we don't got to listen to y'all. So what reparations is going to do for that, sir? All right, let uh, them finish, brother. Uh, I don't understand uh, what why it's so un why it's not comprehensible why reparations will repair that uh repair reparation all of all of the issues that you've addressed is because we are displaced in this country uh do we both agree with that mm. yes no i understand we were displaced but i'm trying to figure out what when you keep you saying that your grassroots, your whole main thing to try to get votes, you're, you're going independent first. And then, you know, in California, we have mail-in votes. You know that, right? So you're going independent against two other two entities that's always been there. And then you're trying to say that your 10 people that's going to go with you just because they say you're not a Democrat, that's going to help. But we got mail-in votes. We have mail-in votes. How I'm saying, I agree with you, reparations, all that. But you, you just focusing on one thing. That ain't got nothing that ain't going to help right now. We're talking about these kids getting killed. They got a new law out that's on with the gangs and everything. How is reparations at this particular time that you're talking about that's going to help us right now? Because, about some money. because, brother, because right now, because, brother, because right because, now, because, brother, reparations can help get you the necessary things that we can't really afford right now. You talked about the kids in the street. You talked about the gang violence. If See, when this thing, when these so-called Jews got their reparations, they was able to open up shops. They was able to open up businesses. They was able to give their people jobs, brother. So the brother is focusing on reparations because he's trying to tell you when you get reparations, God damn it, that's the beginning of it all. You can start to open up different shops and schools and, and um, you know, um, daycare centers or whatever you have, whatever have you. So this is what the brother's focusing on. And a lot of you black brothers and sisters should be out there backing them instead of trying to discourage them, brother. Yeah, Come let me, on, let man. Me jump what, in here. Let me, let me, I want to too. jump I'm in. I'm to say something, too. Uh, you know, Leon. right now, the people who I'm running against, my opponents, I, I've researched them all. You have people on this ballot trying to make sure you go back to jail, you go to jail, that you are displayed. You, you have a man running right now talking about he's against critical race theory. That's a white codified term of saying anybody who's against um, fighting against racism. So, I mean, you know, and I don't understand why there's a disconnect with the reparations terminology and the definition of it. And I, I, I can't brother, brother drive Dion. home e anymore. I, I, I just like, want to ask you a question. All I would like to say is if you're going to vote right now, you could use that same movement to try to get me in there because you understand that I'm for reparations. Uh, yeah. Well, brother Dion, ask, can you define, I want you to, because we have a, we study this thing. We have a whole book on on reparations right. man I, I i keep a copy I, I keep a copy of it of it on my desk right from here to equality reparations for black americans in the 21st century uh you know i'm curious to to hear what what does reparations look like to you yes so i established a dmlg package it, it, it stands for defense money land grants constructed for from the four elements of american society 
the defensive structure part, which consists of a military law enforcement agencies and a, and a court system that's going to encompass uh, a, a legislation piece that's going to make sure, and you can only pass this to Congress or the president signs it into law, that's going to uh, uphold our 14th Amendment to get de defense established for us so we can actually have armed forces establishing our rights. Because a, a, a piece of paper is just a piece of paper. If there is no, um, a piece of paper is just a piece of paper of law if there's no enforcement of it. That's one. Number two, capital, the flow of currency, the money part, the, the, the most popular part, right? I came up with what's called an at least factor. We can all agree that there is at least 10 million people who classify as blacks who descended from American slaves, at least 10 million. And I say at least, and and the true word is at least, we know there's more, right? Yeah, but yeah like we, 36 million. No, 36, we, we, know, million. we know there's more with, with the at least part, I put that there so that we can all agree. So there's no debate. We can at least agree that there is 10 million people. So with the 10 million people, what I've established is I, calculated the uh, GDPs from every year since 1865. I calculated it, it, it all up. It came up to about one quadrillion dollars. One quadrillion is the number after trillion. You got, you got million, billion, trillion, and then quadrillion, all right? So with that at least factor in relations to the population size and the entire population size of the whole country, which is 3%, 10 million is about 3% because we have 300 million people in this country. I calculated an at least factor of how, of how much money they owe on a lump sum, okay? And you get two checks. You get a lump sum check and an annual check you're, you're, because you're, 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 your annual check comes because this country will always owe us because we built this country. And as long as this country exists, they owe us just like the IRS. They make it a, a duty and an obligation that we pay them every year because we we benefit off of this country in their minds is vice versa. OK, the government have an obligation to pay us for building this nation. So with the lump sum check, I took that at least factor of three percent. All right. And I multiplied it into one quadrillion dollars that comes up to 30 trillion dollars that's the lump sum with 10 million people divided into um 30 trillion dollars everybody have a lump sum of 3.1 million dollars okay with inflation that goes up every year it don't have to be paid off all at once but eventually that check is going to stop the second check the annual check is based on the at least factor in comparison with the annual GDP of $20 trillion a year. That $20 trillion a year divided into 10 million people at least, okay? And at least 3.1 million for the first check and at least $60,000 a year for the second check. That check never stops. The reason why that check never stops is because this country owes us and it goes up with equity because of inflation. OK, so inflation goes up every year. This country, one dollar is not going to be the same in 100 years. So as the dollar decreases, the check goes up in relative to the GDP gross domestic product of this country annually on a yearly basis. So in 2018, when I first established this DMLG, what I did was I calculated, I saw that uh, America had like $20 trillion. It goes up every year, like the stock market, like the real estate market. Due to inflation, the GDP goes up every year. So to make it, make the mathematics a little bit more simple, you get two checks, one for 3.1, at least 3.1 million and at least $60,000 a, a year. Now, the third uh, the third element is land. Now, we already got it on the books that they owe us 40 acres. 
So if you take at least 40 acres and multiply that by 10 million, right? You got 400 million acres of land. That's a land mass larger than most states. They're all states. That's larger than Texas. 400 million acres of land. And we know that there are millions of acres of land in this country that is unoccupied, right? And not only that, I'm going to institute what's called what's called eminent domain, which means I'm going to be taking land. So, you know, um, and giving it back. And last but not least, having access to capital, access to capital. So grants, I'm going to give out grants for those who want to build infrastructure. So if you have a good idea for any type of business infrastructure at all, you will be able to go to a board and say, OK, look. I want to I need one million dollars to start a school or a hospital, right, or a website or anything or a bank or whatever. And if you could show that you have the, cap the, uh, the capabilities and you have the the um, what's the word, the um, know how for the lack of a better terminology right now, the expertise, then you would be able to get that money and that money don't have to come out of your own pocket. Right. That's money just for the establishment of your business or whatever, any type of any type of organization that you try to establish. So that's what I calculated as DMLG defense money land grants. OK, so without any further ado, um, we're going to close this thing out right now. And I want to go ahead and let um, Ibrahim say something right quick. And then my brother Lord Abba, and then we're gonna let the um the brother close us out. I appreciate being on this platform. Um how Lord Abba had raised a book um by Dr. Sandy Darity from Here to Equality. I I'm not sure if you read it or not. That that's a really good book. And um another one is um the one by Mahersa Baradaran. I think that is um Help me out, um, Naheem. The color, of, the color, color of, money. of money. The color of money. It deals the, with I, the history of I, black banking in the United States. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, not just for the panel, but for everybody, it'll really help you understand, you know, what a, a full scope reparations plan could look like. Um, much love to everybody on the panel. I hope you and your uh, campaign have success. Thank you. I'm out. Peace. Peace, brother. Thank you. Brother Lord Abel. Yes, yes, indeed. Again, you know, I'm glad that we had this discussion. You know, it's politics for our people is not a sexy discussion. And it, that's backwards. That's backwards. A lot of people can tell you the stats of the football game, the basketball game. Yeah. They can recite the lyrics of, of all of their favorite rappers backwards while drunk, probably, <laughs> right? But when it comes to the issue of us obtaining the power needed to advance our own causes in this country, we are, we are wholly ignorant. And although I will say that there has been a, an awakening over the past several years, you know, I think politics is starting to become a real conversation in a lot of Black yeah. homes and right. we need candidates running you know this this brother Dion yes, that's running shout out to you um you know there are some things that I I would I would definitely love to build with you on right mm -hmm. but the fact that you're getting out there and and running you know that 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 says a lot and at our on on our platform I should say Right. Uh, the, the motto is don't just fight the power, become the power. And then and only then will you have the power to make a change. And we That's see right. that you're you're attempting to do that. And um, I do want to address something somebody said in the chat. They said uh -huh. that 40 acres was only the 40 acres in the mule or the 40 acres rather was only for certain black Americans. There was a, a, a bill that was passed. Well, it was presented, let me say. Uh, Abraham Lincoln got murdered so almost everything got reversed House Resolution 29 
you can all look this up, in the 40th Congress first session where 40 acres was going, going to be given to every freedman, every last freedman, right? And, and it says, to each male person who is the head of a family, 40 acres. To each adult male, whether the head of a family or not, 40 acres. To each widow who is the head of a family, 40 acres. So, you know, we've done a deep dive into this Freedman history. And, you know, one day we're going to come back here on Sarnetta and, and, and really chop it up and, and give the family some, some political education and a history of this Freedman movement and why it is so important to our uh, future here in, in this country. Honest to you, Brother Dion Jenkins, man, much success mm -hmm. to you. Would love to build with you outside of yes, you know, outside of this platform, big bro. So I know that you already know. Peace, what time Lord Abba. Thank man. you. And um, yo, Lord Abba, you can invite them on to your show one day if y'all yeah, want to continue. Yeah, definitely. Come, come you know. to be the power. Um, I don't know what well, we we could exchange contacts. I, yeah, uh, I'll send you. I'll yeah, send you the brother. Um, the email, the other yeah, brother. Yeah. Definitely come through. We we can build. And um, yeah, that, that that's it for me. Peace and love to everybody. Peace, man. peace, Lord yeah, Abba. Yeah. Thanks also, a lot for coming through. Also, uh, don't forget, uh, follow me on YouTube, Dion right. D Jenkins. Dion D Jenkins. Follow me on YouTube. Give him your Instagram. Follow Facebook. me on Twitter. Yes, sir. Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Dion D Jenkins. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Hip hop for president. Hip hop for president. And since the raising of the issue of uh funding was so of, of a uh of a um passionate topic because a, a lot of people had a real pro if you want to don't if you want to you know help me out um hey uh is it is it okay mr sonetta if we could put my album link my album yes website yes i thought i did that earlier but i will do it okay uh hold on i'm gonna post it in the chat right now I just posted it in the chat and I'm going to see because you probably already did it. Hold on. Let me see. I didn't check. Um, no, it's not there yet. So, yeah. So I just posted it in the in the chat room. Yeah. You feel free to uh, put it in the description box. If if you want to buy the album. Yeah. The album link is in there. It's in there. The album link is in there and you get a free out. I mean, not a free, but you get a You get something in return. Right. You get an album you know, for me. And, uh, you know, I got, I got co-signs with, with some hip hop legends who co-signed this. So, um, you know, th that'll help, you know? Yes, sir. You, you on mute, sir. What's that? Yes. I'm saying thank you. I appreciate y'all for coming through. Yeah. And, um, is there any last words for you, my brother Jenkins? Yes, please. June the 7th, 2022, come out and vote if you are in California. Um, you know, um, you know, we have some candidates who who are in opposition of me um, on this ballot. So let's let's make a move. Let's try to get me to the final stage so we could really have a shot after that. All right. Peace and black power. Thank you all for coming through. We Thank appreciate you. it. Peace, yeah, love being here. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right.